Are the Patriots trying to start a Bill Belichick bidding war and are teams interested in trading for him? That's what we're going to discuss here on New England Patriots Today by Chat Sports. My name is Harrison Graham. Before we do that, make sure you share this video on social media. All you got to do is click the share icon right below this video. You can share it on Facebook, you can share it on Twitter, X, whatever we're calling it these days. Uh, spread the word. Let's get the word of Patriots Today out there, especially today's show. Okay, Greg Bedard of the Boston Sports Journal put this out there that he's heard that more than one team are sniffing around for one Bill Belichick. And the three teams that Roley and I have speculated here for a while based on the chatter that's been out there and just which ones we think logically make sense, the Chargers, the Panthers, and the Commanders, Roley. And there's reasons for all three that we can go through real quick. L.A., you can go with the head coach-GM combo. Don't have to pay two separate individuals. They're kind of a cheap franchise. I think that makes sense. David Tepper, he seems like someone who wants the, the, the sexy, the splash, the kind of the headliner type of move. Uh, and then Washington, with new ownership, uh, they could just be looking for a steady presence as well. Yeah, it's intriguing to me that in that report from Bedard is that he didn't say, oh, we've heard one team. He said teams. And... <laughs> We know, and we'll get to in a little bit, that New England could be looking to move off Bill Belichick this offseason, mutually part ways, and it obviously benefits the New England Patriots franchise to trade him rather than just lose him for nothing. So the point remains, if you could get a draft pick in return for Bill Belichick, that would be pretty ideal. We talked about it on yesterday's five-step plan to fix New England, but these three teams all have top 10 picks, a.k.a. Carolina doesn't even have a pick this year in the first round. So it's unlikely that you're going to get a first-round pick if these were the three teams that actually wanted Bill Belichick. But maybe you can squeeze a early second-rounder out of Carolina or the Chargers or the Commanders. It's a fascinating storyline to find out. We'll talk more about it in a second. But Harrison... Also, a new report came out today. The Chargers apparently won Harbaugh. Yeah, there's been multiple people who have been reporting that. Uh, that was being discussed on Cowherd show earlier. Also, Jordan Schultz put that out there yesterday that uh, the Chargers would love uh, to get Jim Harbaugh. He admitted in his report he's not sure if, Mich if Harbaugh is interested uh, in the Chargers. I have been told personally by uh, a source from the Michigan side of things if – he does not get a new contract from Michigan by Christmas-ish. He is interested in the Bears first, little interest in the Raiders. So, like, if he returns to the NFL, he's mostly interested in the Bears. If that job opens up, which that remains to be seen what they're going to do with Matt Eberflus, uh, just to tie it to New England, Roley, I, I don't think Harbaugh to the Patriots is very likely uh, for those out there interested in that. Uh, so keep that in mind. But uh, obviously, if Jim Harbaugh – enters the coaching cycle mix along with Bill Belichick, that certainly spices things up uh, this coaching cycle. Now, if not New England, where will Bill Belichick be coaching next year if he had to guess? And I will say this, I do think he will coach somewhere. Like, I think there's too much chatter and buzz out there. Like, I, I think like a retirement or some like, I'm just going to step down and be like a front office, just exec in New England and kind of live on my merry days. I think that is pretty unlikely here, Roley. I think he will coach. I don't think he's ready to walk away from it. No, I mean, I completely agree. And I was kind of mentioned a little bit earlier, like you connect the dots a little bit here, right? You combine Bedard's report that the Patriots might be trying to, or I mean, I, he said that teams are interested with another report that the Patriots might be trying to create a little bit of a bidding war that was also discussed on Cowherd show. I believe it originated from Kern again, our good friend old Tommy C. Oh, Tommy. Um, but, I mean, it would make sense from New England's side to try to create a price point for Belichick to continue to climb, right? Because that's only going to benefit New England for the future. But my main point here, Harrison, is that I know a lot of Patriots fans are unsure if New England should move off Belichick because of how grateful they've been for the past 24 seasons. Mentioned it yesterday, mentioned it again. All good things come to an end eventually. It's just a matter of when and where, and it feels like this is where it's heading, where it's the 2024 offseason when Belichick and New England split ways. And listen, 
I love the guy, but sometimes it's just time to move on, and I think it is now. And I don't. There's no shame in that either, no. by the way. No, it, look, the time is now, and here's why: because you're going to have a top three pick. It, it just feels like it, it, it's time for like a new direction overall. So why not? Like the worst case scenario is you let Belichick make this big decision with the top three pick. And then a year from now, it's even more clear that you need a change. Like, that's not what you want because then let's say you, let's say Belichick drafts Drake May and then you go in a new direction 12 months from now. And that coach doesn't want Drake May. Like, you don't yeah. want that. Like, you want to bring in somebody who's ready to hit the ground running, let him choose the direction he wants to go into. And by him, I mean coach GM combination, by the way. I think you need one of each. Uh, and then you just get this new regime rolling. Like, that, that's just what you need. Uh, if you can get a top 40 pick for Belichick, that would be awesome. Um, I think any day two pick would be great. Uh, he gets a fresh start. You get extra draft capital. Let's go. Like, let's get this thing rolling. So I, I'll, I'll say this, Harrison. If it's a third-round pick or no picks in splitting ways from Belichick, I'm obviously going to take the third-round pick. But I would really like to see them squeeze out a second oh, at for their sure. minimum. It's I like, mean, listen, you'd love to have the number one over. Uh, yeah, I get that Belichick's had a rough last two years, but the guy is still arguably the best defensive coach in all football. What he's done with this Patriots defense this year with a lot of moving parts um, has just been terrific. So. It's, it sounds harsh, and look, people can agree or disagree with me. I just don't feel good about the idea of him picking the quarterback and no. the direction of this offense. No, like, I, I, do I just agree with I that. don't like that. Like, it, look, perfect world. He gives up personnel duties, and uh, you get a real GM in here. Like, I just don't think that's going to happen. And I think, based on the reports, it's pretty clear that that would not even be an option. So. Yeah. Um, I just think that's where we're at at this point. Hit that subscribe button here on Patriots today. The more subscribers we're able to get, the more Patriots videos we can do. I think we're right at 100 subs away from 7,000 here on the channel. So uh, give us a Merry Christmas. Let's get to 7K by December 25th. We would greatly appreciate it. More subs equals more content. All right. Speaking of which, uh, you want to have some fun during NFL Week 16 here? Uh, starting tonight, by the way, Thursday Night Football Prize Picks, Daily Fantasy Made Easy. Uh, there's also some boosters during uh, the holiday season. Matthew Stafford, Derek Carr, these are more than their projected passing yards. Uh, you have to take them more with these juice numbers, but here's the deal. Yeah, there's more risk. Stafford having to go for 300-plus, Carr for 275. Here's the thing, though. If those both hit... You're not just getting three times your money, which you normally get on a two-player entry. You're getting 11 at times your money. Ten bucks to win 110. Let's go. High-scoring Thursday night game tonight, fellas. Let's sling that rock. Prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use our code CLNS. You can do different sports, the NFL, college football, uh, college basketball, NBA, NHL. You can cross over sports with your picks as well. Two to six-player entries. Use our code CLNS to get a deposit match up to one hundred dollars oh boy i did not think this would be a headliner here on patriots today ever again but here we are deflate gate 2.0 well it doesn't feel as significant here but things are coming out of this patriots chiefs game that are bizarre mark daniels saying call it deflate gate part two according to multiple sources nfl officials didn't properly inflate the kicking balls at Gillette Stadium before Patriots Chiefs. Uh, Chris Mason adding this as well. Sources indicate that's why Patriots kicker Chad Ryland and Chiefs uh, kicker Harrison Butker missed field goals in the first half. Well, Chad Ryland's missed a lot of kicks this year. Uh, but Butker missing a 39-yarder. That's his first miss of the season, by the way, and it wasn't particularly close. Uh, here's my question. How is that even possible? I mean, this is literally... National news, what, seven years ago, whatever it was, when Deflategate 1.0 happened. I mean, CNN's talking about it. It's going to court. And fast forward, and with the same freaking franchise, we're talking about football's not uh, uh, inflated properly, Rolly. What the hell's going on here? I mean, this is just utterly ridiculous by the officials. And I, I want to get on the record right now. <laughs> if the NFL comes out and says that this is 
all because of the weather and the wind, and that's why the PSI was a little bit lower than usual. I am going to lose my mind because if that is exactly what New England said back when they absolutely stomped on the Colts' throat in that AFC Championship <laughs> game. Because, listen, naturally, the air in things goes down when it's cold. Think about it. Your tire pressure, that goes down it's in the ne- winter. It's never happened in any other cold weather game. I'm just going to say, <laughs> if the NFL tried to use that as an excuse, I'm going to go down to New York City and beat up Roger Goodell personally. Whoa, because, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Being dead serious, I'm going to do that because that would be an absolute witch hunt, which it was. Back I do want to say this as well. Now, that tweet, maybe I, I, I don't know if he's distinguishing or not. He said the kicking balls, which, listen, if you don't follow this stuff closely, kickers and quarterbacks don't necessarily like the ball inflated at the exact same level. Now, they have to be within the PSI range of what's legal, but. Were the kicking balls just too low and not the normal game footballs? Like it's it's all very confusing, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Here's my thing: like, does anyone actually care? This is a regular nah, season game I don't in think week anyone fifteen. Cares. The Patriots wanted to lose. The Chiefs wanted to win. That's what happened. I, I, to me, like, if this investigation goes with uh, not enough evidence to determine, I'm fine with that. I will say this, Roly, and you and I agree on this, and I don't know why teams won't learn. Uh, why you would ever draft a kicker is beyond me because I swear the undrafted guys always end up being better, and the Patriots spent a fourth-round pick on Chad Ryland, and he is awful. I mean – this entire deflate gate situation is really just an excuse for us to bring up old, uh, I guess, rants on Roger Goodell and talk about how bad Chad Ryland has been because he's, so bad. he's been brutal. He was coming into the NFL known as a guy with a big leg, and he's really yet to showcase accuracy, The honestly, the leg strength. Like It's been rough, and it's tough to see. Obviously, it doesn't matter because New England still stinks. But to see Nick Folk, who the Patriots replace with Chad Ryland, be elite over in, I believe it's Tennessee, has been quite disappointing. But either way, how can you draft a fourth-round kicker one and him still be bad? And i got to be honest, it feels like New England's going to be looking for a new kicker going into next year with how bad Chad Ryland has been. At least got to bring in competition, right? you got to do something. and. Kind of, we want to toss it back your way. I, I don't know if Ryland can be the kicker in 2024, but what, what say you? Yeah, let us know what you guys think. Uh, should Ryland be the kicker next year? Why for yes and for no? I think at minimum you got to bring in a veteran in competition. I always joke, Fat Randy is the 33rd kicker in the NFL. He always finds his way onto a roster. Maybe you bring him in uh, to push Ryland next year. But at minimum, you can't just let him have the job without any kind of pressure. Uh, in training camp and in the preseason. So we'll see what happens. Why for yes or in for no. If you love the Patriots, subscribe today uh, as we're trying to hit 7,000 subs before Christmas. Uh, We'll be back uh, with uh, another video soon. Not sure exactly when yet with the holidays here. At minimum, uh, Christmas Eve we'll have something. I think Roley's going to do a watch party uh, for that game. That's most likely going to be the case there. So be on the lookout for that. We'll see if we have any videos before then or not. Obviously, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, all that stuff. See you guys soon on Patriots Today.